Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap where I bring you stories from around the world about interesting birds and um, observations I have made about birds. The first story is about wedge-tailed eagles in Tasmania. A fabulous photograph has just been produced. Uh, molting in birds, what's molting all about and where are our Latham snipe at the moment? Hi, it's Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap. My first story today is about wedge-tailed eagles and in particular the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle. Now over the years the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle has been regarded as a subspecies of the widespread wedge-tailed eagle across, uh, which occurs right across Tasmania and right across Australia. The wedge-tailed eagle is a very large, Australia's largest eagle, closely related to the golden eagle of the northern hemisphere. Uh, Wedge-tailed eagles largely eat um, live small mammals and birds, but they will also eat carrion as well if they can find it. The form on Tasman in Tasmania is a much larger bird, um, and sometimes it's regarded as a separate species, sometimes it's regarded as a subspecies. Um, it's an endangered form of the wedge-tailed eagle, uh, and there's only around a thousand of them uh, believed to still be um, to be in Tasmania. So it's a bird that we have some concern about. But I was pleased to see just recently a fabulous photograph and have a look at it on the uh, website. Um, it's uh, a picture of nine wedge-tailed eagles all standing on a fence, all waiting to go down to eat some, uh, some food. A fabulous photograph captured by a, um, an amateur birdo in Tasmania. Uh, showing these wedge-tailed eagles almost in vulture-like uh, formation, sitting on a fence, waiting to feed. And what happens, of course, is if there is some carrion, like a dead kangaroo or a dead animal on the side of a road, a number of uh, wedge-tailed eagles can um, come along and they'll wait until it's safe to go in and, and feed. And a bit vulture-like, a group of them can then um, uh, form and go in and feed on the birds, on the, on, on the dead animal on the ground. There have been records of up to 40 wedge-tailed eagles doing this sort of behaviour on mainland Australia. So it's not that unusual, but it is unusual to get such a fabulous photograph of, uh, of these beautiful birds. Of course, wedge-tailed eagles mate for life. They're very long-lived birds and, um, and spectacular birds to be um, observing in the field. So well done um, getting that photograph, and I hope you enjoy having a look at it. Uh, on the website attached to this YouTube video. My second story today is concerning molt. Now, people have observed to me um, that different, at different times of the year, sometimes their familiar bird will seem to be uh, in a, have different colours or look a little different to how they normally would look. And at this time of the year in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, we're going into our winter. And at this time of the year, um, birds will have finished their breeding season um, and they, they may well be molting out of their breeding plumage and coming into a, a, a new plumage. Frequently, birds will molt twice a year, and molting means losing all of their feathers to grow a new set. Um, ber birds really do depend on their feathers to keep them dry, to keep them warm, uh, and, the and as dis to, when they're coloured, to, to form displays uh, to attract a mate or to provide camouflage. So birds will often go through two molts a year. At this time of the year, they'll go into a winter plumage, uh, and then in the spring, they'll, they'll come into their breeding plumage again. So um, people at this time of the year are noticing either birds are, are, are losing the feathers and their bright colours and going into a, a duller form of their um, of themselves, or, um, or a slightly scruffier look of, 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 their, of, of their normal appearance. And this is completely normal. Um, in some species, the molt occurs, all the feathers drop out at the same time, and they're having to regrow their feathers all in one hit. And the birds become flightless during that period. There are a number of species of ducks that can't fly at all uh, when they're going through their molting, and they're very vulnerable to predators as they, seem, they, they then get very secretive. But typically, most of our bush birds will lose their feathers one at a time, and so over a period of a number of weeks, uh, they can grow a new set of feathers, either their winter plumage, in the case of our fairy wrens, the, the, uh, the males will lose their blue colour and they'll go into a brown colour or a patchy colour over winter. Uh, and then in the spring, they will then remolt and come back into their, into their bright new colours. So molting is a, a normal uh, part of a, a bird's uh, life cycle. And a lot of studies are done to understand how it works and how it helps birds 
in their in their in their quest to you know find a mate in the new season, um, and a lot of a lot of challenges in terms of identifying some of the various um, types of malt that we have in different species. So my last story today is about uh, Latham snipe. Now you might wonder why I'm doing a story about Latham snipe when it's May here in Australia, um, and in fact it's a cold day today and it's rainy. Um, and it's rather bleak. And of course, we have no Latham snipe in southern Australia at present. Um, but my thoughts go to the snipe, the, 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 the snipe that I was watching only a few months ago are now in, fully in their breeding season uh, in northern Japan, in uh, Hokkaido, or in parts of Russia. It's extraordinary to think that a bird that I was watching here in Canberra uh, only a few months ago is now uh, nesting in uh, that part of the world. Uh, and whilst we go through our cold winter here in Canberra, um, they're in the, the, the rich, warm uh, sunshine of Hokkaido where food is abundant uh, and they're, they're able to produce their young. And at the end of this coming season for them and at the beginning of spring for us, they'll be bringing those young birds all the way back to southern Australia and to parts of around where I live in Canberra and the, the, the new generation of snipe will be here. It's just an extraordinary thought to think that they're there at this time of the year um, breeding and, and that we'll be expecting them back in the springtime. So um, I hope one day to be able to get to Hokkaido and see, see the breeding for myself and hopefully I can bring a story about that to you and you can watch it on my YouTube channel along with many other stories that I bring to you every week uh, which I hope you're enjoying and the website which contains interesting stories around subjects about birds from around the world. So thank you for listening. Uh, check out the website, check out the YouTube channel, check out my program of tours that I'm doing. I've got a whole range of different safaris that I run um, around Australia uh, and they're all listed on the website as well. So check it all out. That's all I have for this week. So happy birding.